Jeff Rosencrantz with Shelton Capital Management with us to talk about rising tides, optimizing your income portfolio during a period of economic uncertainty. It's going to be a great presentation from Jeff, but before we get dive into those details around fixed income, we want to uh, share a little bit about uh, Axos and what we're doing at Axos. It has uh, been an exciting journey for Axos over the last 22 years to be one um, of the only digital banks out there um, with this amount of longevity. And July 4th, 2000 was a fitting date for uh, us to get started and to declare independence from brick and mortar banking. Over the last 22 years, uh, Axos, which was originally called Bank of the Internet, um, became Axos Financial in 2008, and it is now a publicly traded company on uh, the New York Stock Exchange. You will see that our mission on behalf of all of our clients is to be driving forward every day to create the best experience, best financial experience we can for you every, every day. We are committed to continuous improvement in order to help make your everyday financial life that much more successful for you. The bank has um, been operating from a tremendous point of financial strength, has been focused on an excellence in customer service and in innovating on our product line to bring you the best service and benefits and outcomes in your financial life. This slide is just a small demonstration of the company awards and the product recognition that Axos has received for delivering that excellence in customer service and product innovation. You will see that we are committed to helping you solve the financial puzzle. We know, especially in times like we're in today from an economic perspective, global perspective, regional perspective, that it may be sometimes very confusing to understand how to move uh, your finances forward. And so we wanna be bringing you solutions through financial planning, through plan, through our bank, through our deposit relationship we can have with you, to borrow to where you need to have your mortgage, uh, maybe you need personal lending, and then with invest, um, which we're talking about today, how do you look at the current financial markets? How do you participate in these markets? How do you continue uh, to create income and growth for yourself? Axos is about empowering uh, each individual client and their family and businesses to easily manage your financial life. We do it through our digital platform, our digital platform that enables you to manage your money smarter through a desktop experience. If you wanna be at home and you wanna be in front of your home computer, we want that desktop experience to be seamless to be uh, customizable so that you can have the information you need uh, at the forefront and make it really highly efficient and, and easy and transparent for you to conduct uh, your financial life. The mobile app experience, we are absolutely committed to continuous improvement in that mobile app, app experience, mobile check deposit, having access to a virtual financial assistant who we call Evo, uh, knowing that there's strong cybersecurity there, strong privacy there around your identification, uh, your identity is incredibly important and we have to protect that. Um, being able to set up account alerts so you can see what's going on in your checking account, what's going on with your watch list and your invest account. And using our personal finance manager to be able to link all of your external accounts with your Axos accounts 
to provide a holistic financial picture. And as you're thinking about your spending, your budgeting, how um, you are going to continually provide and help your family reach its goals, that personal finance, finance manager is right there at your fingertips to bring that holistic viewpoint to you. So as we have evolved as a bank, we have continually evolved our other business verticals. And Axos Invest is one of those key verticals that wants to provide investing solutions uh, to, to each and every one of you. And we want you to be able to do it in the way that most meets your needs, which is why Axos presents a self-directed trading platform so that you can have no commission trades through stocks, through exchange traded funds, through mutual funds. You can get access to options or margins. Or if you want a more advice embedded approach with model management around ETF selection, we have our managed portfolios offering for you. These are two very robust platforms with unique features built inside of them. As you look at this feature list on the next slide, you, um, you know, will see that with our self-directed trading platform, um, we do have um, features like options and margin. We have um, an elite subscription that can, um, that can get you access to stock analysts, to, um, less expensive option contracts. So let's move to that next slide. And, you know, we'll look at, you know, some of the, um, and, and our access to our relationship managers. We want you to have um, access to an individual that can help guide you through the self-directed trading platform, through all of the feature sets, how to work with our trading tools, how to interpret uh, the research data, the analyst opinions that are there. And for managed portfolio, this is a very low cost way, again, to access investment models that feature exchange traded funds across the asset classes. And it provides other services around tax loss harvesting and automatic rebalancing. So Axos Invest is really about where are you at in your investment journey and how would you like to receive advice and guidance and have the implementation that works best for you. We also are incredibly committed to being independent, to being non-proprietary, to being objective. And that means that we're going to connect you with the right resources at all times for your financial journey. We want to engage in your journey path. Maybe you're at the stage in your investing journey that you're accumulating assets. You're in growth mode. Or perhaps you're on the other end of it and, and you're thinking about, I have spent all these years really growing my assets under management, really growing and accumulating that nest egg. And now you're ready to retire and you're ready to start spending off of that. That's going to replace your income as you exit from your job and retire. So how do you need to think about continued income generation or how do you think about winding that income out of your portfolio? We want to guide you to investment options that are really specific to you. And, and moreover, we want to pair you with experts like we're doing today with Shelton so that you can get unique insights about the market at all times. We are super excited about our Invest blog and uh, being able to, um, to be able to bring you rich content about how to navigate the market, how to think about fixed income, how to think about equities, how to even think about digital assets and the crypto and the metaverse and, and that whole you know, range of investment vehicles. And so we would encourage you to go to axos.com, invest blog, and take a look at all of uh, this rich content alongside of these retirement calculators to help you as well. And we are 
very, very committed to investing in our clients. And that is why we are super excited, you know, to share with you about our, um, about this investment opportunity, um, that if you proceed with an Axos Invest account in self-directed trading or managed portfolio of $1,000 or more, you can earn an additional $150 into that account to help you continue to be able to invest, to be able to watch compounding work to your advantage to grow your assets over time. And for each person that is on this call today, uh, we are going to give you an additional $50 boost when you fund that account. So you will get a total of $200 for being with us today. So we are, we are super excited about being able to engage in this opportunity um, today with you to talk through some of these market um, opportunities that exist. So with that, we're going to pivot um, into our uh, investment content for today. And, and what you're going to see from Axos Invest moving forward uh, in our client education series is that we're going to introduce you to experts that are available through our self-directed trading platform. We're going to be introducing you to some of the top asset managers in the country that provide mutual funds or provide exchange traded funds. And we'll bring in those analyst perspectives around stocks as well. But we want to be your go-to place for coming to us for that content, for that education, for that rich expertise to help you make the decisions that are most um, productive for you, that are most aligned uh, with the purpose that of, of the investments for you. So with that, I'm, I'm really super excited to introduce you to Shelton Capital Management today. Shelton was founded in 1985. Shelton has maintained a commitment to their consistent investment principles and their steadfast focus on authentic customer service. They're managing over 3.2 billion in client assets. They offer a range of investment solutions. The solution we're speaking here today is just one of many top-notch Morningstar, well-rated uh, solutions for client portfolios. And so I'm going to introduce you to our speaker today, Jeffrey Rosencrantz. And Jeffrey has a rich experience of over 25 years of investing experience in the credit markets with an emphasis on high yield, distressed debt, and special situations. He's worked at Cedar Ridge Partners, Durham Asset Management, Cooperstown Capital Management, and Ernst & Young. He holds an MBA from the Stern School of Business at New York University and a BA from Duke University. He's also a certified public accountant. I know he is super excited about this tactical credit income fund. I really want you to focus in on, on that word tactical, tactical meaning opportunistic, and how this uh, fund and the leadership of Jeffrey and the rest of the portfolio management team at Shelton can be instrumental in really helping you navigate these fixed income markets today. So with that, Jeff, I'm turning it over to you. Thank you so much, Tracy. Uh, I really appreciate the opportunity to be here with everyone this evening and excited to talk to you about where we are in the fixed income markets and how you as investors can take advantage of the current conditions that exist. So before we get into the how, let's talk a little bit about where we are and how we got here. Inflation is running very hot and a lot of that is on account of the tremendous amount of stimulus that was injected into the economy during the pandemic, which caused severe supply demand imbalances, supply chain problems, which are well known at this time, and I'm sure you all have experienced them in your own lives. And then it was further compounded by 
the Russia invasion of the Ukraine and other geopolitical events. It's a really challenging time in all asset classes and markets and fixed income has not been immune to that. It's been a tough year, but we're here to talk about where we are now and where we think we are headed going forward so that you all can position yourselves to take advantage of the opportunities that we believe exist. Before we get to the actual opportunity set and how to best take advantage of it, let's spend a little bit of time talking about inflation because this is really going to be the key driver for fixed income markets over the coming months and next couple of years. The Federal Reserve, their dual objective or dual mandate is to maintain full employment and price stability. And it's often pretty challenging to do both at the same time. Well, there wasn't really a playbook for how to navigate an economy through a pandemic and not, a, not really a playbook that anyone could follow. And so the Federal Reserve and most other economists thought that employment would be, unemployment would be very, very high if no action were taken. So a lot of stimulus was injected into the economy to prop the economy, allow companies and other employers to maintain employment, to get through this unknown period of time. But once it became clear that we were going to get through it from an economic perspective, then and it, it, the uh, employment picture held up much, much better than I believe anyone thought would be possible, it became clear that inflation was the new problem. And so the Federal Reserve, in its playbook, started to raise interest rates. A lot of people believe that maybe they started too late or didn't move quickly enough once they did start raising rates. We're not gonna try to revise history here, but we'll focus on where we're headed. So they've started raising rates and, and let's just go back a slide, please, um, if we could. Thank you. Uh, so we believe the Federal Reserve is starting to make progress on fighting inflation, but it's really important to understand that this process takes time. And so patience is really important. There are early indicators out there that it's starting to work and real time data suggests that the economy is starting to slow Interest rate sectors of the economy are starting to roll over. Things like housing, automotive sales, other large consumer purchase items. Companies are starting to tell us that they're seeing a slowdown in customer traffic and customer demand. So there's some evidence that we're making some progress. And commodity prices, which are also often a great indicator as to current and future economic activity, have been falling for several months. Steel, chemicals, agricultural commodities, energy. So these are signs that we read that the economy is starting to slow. And to top it off, uh, just the other day, the latest uh, home price statistics confirmed that home prices, in fact, peaked in July. It's probably not a surprise to all of you and what you see in your local markets, but the official statistics confirm that the, the housing market 
peaked in July and has been softening. And it's no surprise with mortgage rates well north of 6%. However, many components of inflation are sticky and operate on a much, more, on a much longer lag time. And this process won't show enough progress until next year. Now, the Federal Reserve doesn't have the luxury of being early in declaring victory. The Federal Reserve needs to get this right. If inflation expectations become entrenched in people's minds, if people believe that inflation is going to be sticking around for a long period of time, it becomes embedded in their behavior and you risk things like a wage price spiral where wages go up to combat rising prices and then prices have to rise and wages and so on and so forth. And so the Federal Reserve is terrified of inflation becoming embedded in people's mindset. So they need to get this right. And they can't let up prematurely or else all this work and all this pain will be for naught. So they're gonna stick to their playbook, which is continuing to raise short-term interest rates and also, through the other tools at their disposal, their dot plots embedded in their economic forecasts, their other forecasts for the economy, their speeches, and other methods. And they're going to continue to show that they're really committed to conquering inflation no matter what and no matter how long it takes. Now, just because they say this and act this way, that doesn't necessarily mean that that's in fact what's going to happen, but they need to keep their foot all the way down on the pedal here and not slow down and not let up. Let's move on to the next slide. It's important to understand the difference just because short-term rates are rising doesn't mean longer-term rates will. Longer-term interest rates reflect where interest rates are likely to be over the course of this longer period of time. So 10-year treasuries or 10-year interest rates don't just reflect the next 12 to 18 months of high short-term rates and inflation fighting. They reflect a much longer period of time and a lot can happen over that longer period of time. And we'll talk about what we believe is likely to happen. There's reason to believe that after inflation is successfully conquered, interest rates will normalize at lower levels. Because if the Federal Reserve, in the process of trying to conquer inflation, they're slowing the economy significantly. And if they cause a recession, which we believe is likely necessary in order to accomplish this objective, Therefore, longer term rates will go lower, expecting an eventual easing of interest rates in order to stabilize and eventually regrow the economy out of this recession. So again, I just want to reiterate because this is super important, the distinction between short term rates and longer term rates. Short term rates need to keep going higher in order to affect the economy, demand, 
employment, all of this to conquer inflation. But over a longer period of time, if you look out into the future, believe that eventually the Federal Reserve will achieve its objective, but the economy will have slowed significantly and therefore interest rates at that point in the future will be lower in order to then stabilize the economy and eventually regrow it. Let's move on to the next slide, please. Investors can take advantage of current and future conditions, and they should. They should position themselves to capture this currently higher level of interest rates and also the eventual peak and lowering of longer term rates. We're going to talk a little bit here about bonds, how they're different than stocks, why the resiliency of bonds is really important, especially in a slowing economy. Bonds come before stocks in terms of their right of repayment. If a company gets into trouble and in a recession, many companies will get into trouble. A company can lower their dividend or eliminate it entirely. <clears throat> they can pause share buybacks and other cash uses that typically favor stocks. If they need to cut back, those are some levers that they can pull. But what a company can't do in difficult times is stop paying interest on their debt and can't skip repaying debt at maturity. If they miss an interest or principal payment, then they would be in default and the whole company starts spiraling down. So when times get tough, it's really important to understand that bonds have a priority of payment versus equities and are more resilient from a credit worthiness than stocks. So let's look at where we are right now in terms of, actually, let's stay on that same slide. I apologize. Thank you. Um, <clears throat> so let's look at where yields are currently for what we believe are high quality bonds. Five and a half percent on investment grade rated corporate bonds. These are blue chip companies that you all know and recognize and appreciate as good, solid, credit-worthy businesses. 7% on double B-rated corporate bonds. So this would be the next rung down just below investment grade. And these companies, if you do your homework and your credit analysis, also very resilient in an economic downturn. And lastly, I want to point out that investment grade municipal bonds which are incredibly resilient in economic downturns, are currently yielding north of 3.5%, and they're tax exempt, whether it's state, local, federal, depends on where you live and which bonds you buy, but just on a federal tax equivalent basis, that's north of 5.5% for high quality municipal bonds. So these are three sectors of the bond market where yields right now, we believe are really compelling. But it only matters if you believe these borrowers are more resilient 
in an economic downturn because you want to make sure you're going to continue to collect your interest payments and principal payments. Now, this next point is the icing on the cake, if you will. Even if credit spreads widen further from here, the eventual move lower in interest rates, and again, we think this happens six to 18 months from now when it's clear that the, to the Federal Reserve that they're winning the battle of, against inflation, that's when longer term interest rates can pause and will then likely have to head lower to stabilize the economy and regrow it out of a recession. So eventually, when rates move lower, it will generate capital appreciation on these bonds. Now I'm delighted to talk about why the Shelton Tactical Credit Fund is a prudent way for investors to achieve these objectives. And as Tracy mentioned, the, the, we believe the key word is tactical. And I'll talk a little bit about why that's so important in today's markets that are changing by the day, volatile. Um, so it's it's really important. So unlike most bond funds or ETFs that are available, that are index funds or passive, meaning they are benchmarking to an index and they don't take a view other than to mimic or mirror the index that they're trying to track. So unlike those kinds of bond funds who essentially have to buy the entire bond market or the entire relevant segment of the bond market that they're indexing, we use our experience and judgment to buy only the best bonds in the current environment. So instead of having to buy double Bs and single Bs and triple Cs, we can choose to just buy certain double B rated bonds that we believe are going to be very resilient in a downturn and offer attractive yields. In addition, we're able to react quickly to changes in economic data and interest rate outlooks to make meaningful changes to the portfolio. And this is this is super important. We're in crazy times. Things are changing by the day. And a passive or index fund can't react to all of this dynamism. A tactical fund can do just that. React quickly, make meaningful changes, to either play defense if that's what's warranted or to take advantage of opportunities that present themselves. So we can increase or decrease the duration of the portfolio and duration is essentially a measure of the interest rate sensitivity of the portfolio. So if we believe interest rates are going to go lower, we would increase the duration of the portfolio to take advantage of that move lower in rates and vice versa. We can also increase or decrease the credit quality of the overall portfolio by buying more highly rated resilient bonds or vice versa. So if we believe that the economy is slowing and headed to a recession, we would increase the credit quality of the portfolio to make sure our borrowers are going to be able to withstand that slowing economy and continue to pay us our principal and interest. Eventually, when we're 
through the recession that we believe is coming and starting to come out of that recession, that would be a time potentially that we would go down in credit quality because we could get even more return and it would be warranted because at that point, the economy would be improving. The next thing we can do is increase or decrease our exposure. And so the fund is set up to buy bonds or be long bonds. It also has the ability to short bonds uh, and much like shorting stocks, this is where we sell a bond that we believe is going to deteriorate in credit worthiness and maybe struggle to repay interest and principal. So we would sell it with the expectation that we could buy it back at a lower price in the future. And then, so we can make adjustments to the amount of long exposure, short exposure, and then putting the two of those together gets you net exposure. And so again, if we're pessimistic, we would probably reduce our long exposure, increase our short exposure, and therefore overall reduce the net exposure of the fund. And then lastly, we adjust the mix of corporate bonds and municipal bonds based on our view of relative value between those two asset classes. And that's pretty unique in bond funds to invest in both of those at the same time. There are certainly plenty of corporate bond funds. There are tons of municipal bond funds, but there aren't very many you'll find that mix the two together. And we found when you do mix these two asset classes together, you get a really interesting return profile that can minimize volatility and enhance the diversification of your fixed income portfolio. And then on top of all of these adjustments that we can make, we also hedge the interest rate risk in the portfolio to protect investors from unexpected or large moves in interest rates. And this has been really helpful uh, of late when we've been seeing these significant moves higher in interest rates. So on the next slide, we show a number of examples over the life of the tactical credit fund where we had periods of rising interest rates. And you'll see in these examples that the tactical credit fund outperformed treasuries, the ag, in each of these instances. And so I think this is a, a great illustration of why this fund is different and how our use of interest rate hedges can protect investors in a really challenging time in the fixed income markets. So we've talked a little bit about how we got here, where we believe we're headed. I'll summarize a little bit as to how we have the fund positioned right now to take advantage of these current and future market conditions using the tools at our disposal as a tactical, actively managed bond fund. So we've increased the duration by adding longer term bonds because we believe that long term interest rates may not be at their top or peak, but they're getting really close. And so we want to be able to take advantage when longer term interest rates pause and then eventually head lower. And I'm going to jump out of order a little bit. It's important to also mention, though, the fourth bullet point here. We've also accordingly increased our interest rate hedges 
to protect against further large moves higher in rates. So we've increased duration, but not in a vacuum. We've also increased our hedges in case we're wrong. And we sometimes are wrong, just like everyone else. But the key is that we're able to react quickly and course correct or make changes to the portfolio based on new information. We've also increased the credit quality of the portfolio to withstand what we believe is an upcoming recession. We wanna make sure that our borrowers are gonna be resilient and able to navigate a recession and continue to pay us all interest and principal that we're owed. That's super important. It's not the time to be a hero on taking more credit risk. And then we've also added more investment grade rated municipal bonds, which I believe I mentioned earlier, tend to be very resilient in economic downturns. And it should be no surprise to you, state and local governments, and strong municipal issuers, they have a lot of tools at their disposal in a recession to navigate that downturn. Very, very, very rare that you see municipal bond issuers in the investment grade space run into financial problems or default. So these are all the positioning that we've set up the portfolio with to take advantage of where we are and where we're headed. To tie that all together and summarize, currently all in yields on high quality fixed income are attractive, we believe. And even if credit spreads go wider as the economy slows, the eventual pivot from higher rates to lower long-term rates will provide price appreciation on top of those all-in yields, pushing potential total returns over the next year above 10%. An investment in Shelton Tactical Credit Fund tickers are DEBIX and DEBTX, would seek to take advantage of these currently attractive all-in yields, protect against unexpected large additional increases in interest rates, and allow you to generate capital appreciation when the Federal Reserve eventually wins in its fight against inflation and longer-term rates start to head lower at some point next year. So that's my presentation. And uh, I believe Tracy and I are very happy to answer any questions that you may have. And thank you very much for your time and spending it with us this evening. And Jeff, we've had some great questions, so I thought this was a good time while your talk was just fresh in in, uh, in everybody's mind to um, to go ahead and just just address some of these right now. Um, so in your talk about you know how the Fed is responding and the actions that they're taking, do you get any sense from them at all that if there was a negative unemployment report or a uh, reduction in uh, in the inflation numbers, we saw a modest decline in August. If they see that for September, for October, do they do they ease off a bit? I'd love for the answer to be yes but I really don't think they can. They're terrified of inflation expectations becoming entrenched. So I think they have to err on the other side and be 
too sure that they've won the battle. Now, the important thing to understand is the market doesn't have to follow that same rule. The market is going to try and anticipate ahead of time and get that pivot from higher rates to lower rates. Um, so just because the Federal Reserve is going to keep financial conditions really tight and keep pushing interest rates until they see many months in a row of inflation headed lower, unemployment headed higher, uh, the market doesn't have that same burden. And again, the, it, the bond market is gonna try to front run that pivot. And uh, probably we'll, we've had a few false starts on that front over the summer. Most recently, I'm sure we'll have a few more false starts where investors get a little too eager to front run the pivot. But mm -hmm. I think the Fed doesn't have the luxury of being early. That makes sense. That makes sense. And I, I think what you've pointed out in this tactical philosophy that Shelton is applying here, how important that is, because it it is volatile. There is a lot of sort of whiplash going on right now. And uh, being in a being in a fund like this can really help investors take advantage um, of these opportunities when they come. Absolutely. It, it, knowing when it's appropriate to play defense and then when it's uh, when you with this all of this volatility, it presents opportunities on a daily basis uh, to sort of trade around that volatility and enhance returns a little bit. So funds that can actively manage through and around some of this volatility are at an advantage versus funds that essentially are passive and all they do is benchmark an index. Terrific. So there we had another question on the on the yields. You know, you had pointed out, you know, 5.5, you know, on some types of bonds, three on others, but with inflation at, at 8%, does this make sense where these bond yields are at? Are you going backwards? Can you make some sense of this? For our, sure, our I'll, I'll do my best. It's a great question. Uh, if we thought inflation were going to stay at 8% for 10 years, then 5.5% on an investment, on a 10 year investment grade bond would not make sense. But it's, it's, it's really important to dis distinguish between short term rates or short term inflation expectations and longer term. So mm -hmm. uh, that's why we believe that the Fed eventually is going to win. There's gonna be some pain that unfortunately has to go along with that, but we're at 8% now. If you think that inflation will average 2.5%, 3% over the next 10 years, mm -hmm. then yes, 5.5% on a high quality investment grade bond is pretty compelling. That's right. And then you have to also keep in consideration how you might want to dampen volatility in your overall portfolio and, and what sources of that capital appreciation do you want do you want to be able to partake in when things do shift? Absolutely. No, and investors should have a well diversified portfolio. Uh, I'm not suggesting that it should be all in bonds or all in stocks, but uh, if investors follow their plan, as you really articulated very well in your remarks, fixed income has a place in most, if not all, portfolios. And mm -hmm. the opportunities that are being created right now are pretty special i guess is one word of saying uh, uh one way of saying it um you're taking advantage of the fact that the fed has to push interest rates high to combat inflation and so you can take advantage of that by buying bonds at these higher yields than we've seen in many years it's it's really historic what what's happening and so if you are 
if you're income oriented, which is why so many are here with us this afternoon, this this is an area to really look in, look into and take advantage and, and your fund gives them a great opportunity to position themselves. Yeah, we, we think so as well. And thank you. It, um, there, we've been in an environment for several years where uh, Tina has been a catchphrase, right? There is no alternative to equities. Mm -hmm. I think that's changing now. Bonds are a meaningful alternative to equities. Doesn't mean that they should completely replace, but right. as a complement in your portfolio, depending on age and risk tolerance, bonds are in fact uh, much more of a viable alternative than they have been when we were at really low interest rates over the previous several years. Terrific, great insights. Well, I'm going to come back to you at the end, but I just, you know, thought this was a really good point in our conversation to uh, to bring out what some of our viewers are are thinking about today. So, um, so great. So let's move on, and I want to talk a little bit about uh, bear markets uh, with you. And so um, we'll take our webcams off here just to let you focus on the let everyone kind of focus on the slides here. All right. So, um, just you know, as I think about bear markets, I I always, whenever I hear the word bear, I I go to my uh, time in Alaska. I have a son who lives in Alaska, and so there's always lots and lots of, of bear talk um, about what you do when a bear when a bear attacks. And I think there's a lot of um, corollary here to when we when we think about the bear markets and we think about well what happens when when there's a bear market what what happens if if uh you know we have an attack you know of the bear market because for so long right um investors as well as um investment gurus like jeff and and others and those like myself who've been in this for for over 30 years these bears aren't that common. Uh, we have had uh, way more bull markets in, in the history of the markets than we have bears, and bull markets last way much longer than, than bear, bear markets do. And, you know, bear markets, when we've had two prolonged bear markets since 2000, for example, They've lasted almost, you know, 2.5 years, 1.5 years. So they can be, you know, fairly um, short lived. Um, and so, you know, people tell me all the time, you know, in Alaska too, they tell me, don't worry, Tracy, you know, bear, bear attacks are, are very, um, they're, they're not normal. You know, they're, they're, you know, very happen chance, you know, when they occur. So don't, don't be afraid, you know, to kind of walk around and enjoy um, Alaska. And so, you know, I would just, I would just encourage you to keep that perspective as we move through this tumultuous time in the markets while you're trying to navigate this bear market while you wait for this next, you know, opportunity in the bull market. And so if, if you go on our blog page on invest, you'll see that, you know, there's kind of this deeper article there on this topic of 10 steps to consider when investing in a bear market. And you can read it in its entirety, but just as we go to the next slide, just you know, some things that I wanna point out about how to really you know, work your way through this um, is to focus on what you can control. So if you read about you know, how do you, you know, deal with if you were to get this, you know, be in Alaska and really get this bear attack, um, there are some things that you do and you really focus on what you can control in that moment. And some of the things, you know, that, you know, you can do is stand very tall, be very strong, be very confident, wave your hands, you know, and, um, and hope that that, you know, bear will go, will go away. Um, here, in our example of how do you get through a bear market, well, you focus on what you can control. 
And so you go home and you think about what amount of cash you have in your emergency fund. You want to make sure that you have that disposable cash available and ready in the case of emergencies. You want to uh, review your cash flow, look at, look at your spending, look at, you know, uh, do you want to keep spending where you're spending or do you want to mitigate some of that? What can you do to improve your cash flow? And as Jeff and I just talked about, you want to continue investing. The worst thing you can do in a bear market is try to run away from it. You have to live into it. You have to find those opportunities in it. The worst thing you could do if you were in Alaska in a true bear attack is try to run from it. So, um, so if we if we go to the next slide, depending on where you're at, um, you know you want to be thinking about some sound investment principles that you can stick with with, with like staying diversified. We just talked about that, right? Equity diversification, fixed income diversification. Now, if you're in the accumulation mode and you're growing um, your assets, you have a long time horizon. You can tolerate a lot of volatility. You've got time on your hands. So you wanna keep that exposure to equities because that is where you're going to be able to, again, really tap into some good growth. The fixed income can really help you mitigate that volatility and create that diversification and get you into some of those yield benefits, especially in times like this. If you're getting into retirement, you still need to keep some exposure to equities to be able to keep up you know, with inflation, to be able to keep up with your spending goals. So equities are really important. Fixed income is really important. And really understanding how you feel about your risk tolerance and your risk capacity. So when we talk about this, think about risk tolerance as really a measure of how much risk you're willing to take on. How much risk can you live with and still be asleep at night? Your risk capacity is really that objective determination of the level of risk you need in your portfolio now to reach your goals. So again, if you're going into retirement and you, you really don't need to be taking a lot of risk because you've already created your nest egg, you now need to be spending down off that for your income needs, then um, that's going to really help tell you how much risk uh, you really need in your investment strategy. But if your investment strategy needs a whole lot more risk than maybe you can bear, you have to try to find a way to balance that. So risk tolerance with risk capacity. Timeframes are always important to think about in retirement. Thinking about, again, inflation, longevity, income, spending, healthcare expenses, these are all things that are important to be thinking about and thinking about how you customize your strategy around them. And being consistent about your investing can help too. Being consistent in, in uh, the way that you are you know, contributing to the school um, or the way you're even thinking about withdrawing um, from it. So these are just some different, you know, strategies to uh, to help you think, you know, uh, through these times in this bear market. I think the conclusion to my Alaska bear analogy is that there's always, you know, a way to um, there's always a way to deal with situations that you, that are highly unexpected that you weren't. Um, thinking uh, were going to happen. And um, there are some great strategies out there, how to deal with a black bear or how to deal with a grizzly bear. Um, and uh, there are also some great strategies like we just outlined for dealing with that bear market that comes in an unexpected way, um, but 
at the end of the day, as we pointed out here with Jeff's talk and with these other strategies, there is a way to succeed out of it. So some other things that I would just wanna bring your attention to is if you don't have um, a heavy risk appetite to be in the markets right now, if you find that your risk tolerance isn't there, your risk capacity isn't there, we have other ways for you to drive income. And this is in our some of our innovative deposit solutions and rewards checking and the benefits of this is outlined on the next slide. Our innovative rewards checking can now pay you up to 1.25%. So you start with direct deposit and signing up for that personal finance manager that really helps you look holistically at your external and your Axos accounts. You can get 70, um, 0.7, 70%. 70 basis points, as we like to say. If you add a mortgage with Axos or you add a self-directed trading and a managed portfolio account, you can add another 55 basis points and that gets you to a total of 1.25%. Again, a great way to bring your whole financial picture here into Axos and really leverage um, some of this great interest rate to help complement um, what you need for your income. And then our second uh, deposit opportunity is in our high yield savings account. And this is paying up to 0.61% APY. And here uh, you're going to get a free ATM card, you're going to get our suite of digital tools, you can get into this account for $250, no monthly minimum balance. So you can see there's a lot of ways for you to think about how to complement your investment account with these deposit accounts. I like to talk about it if you think of like um, kind of, you know, the, the core, you, you have a circle in the center um, of the page, if you will, if you took a white clean sheet of paper and wrote a circle in the center of the page, that's your core. And are you comfortable with the funds that you have being in that core, being in the investments, and then satelliting some of these great deposit accounts that are very conservative, protected by FDIC, um, and in giving you um, some of these great interest rates, or are you more comfortable potentially having these deposit accounts as your core in that center of that circle with your investment accounts satellited around so that you can take advantage of those fixed income opportunities, those equity opportunities um, as, you, as you see fit. So here at Axos, the beauty of it is that we give you really this centralized digital platform to be able to pair and, and, and have that core satellite approach with your deposit accounts and your investment accounts. So to just wrap up here and get into maybe a couple more questions, um, just want to um, kind of finish up here with our, with our next slide. And this is really, how can you contact us? So we would love to have a consultation with you. We would love to talk more about the ideas that were shared here and have a conversation with you. Um, we, again, are committed to excellence in customer service. We are committed to understanding what your needs are and developing product solutions or aligning solutions where you're at where you need to be, what you need to be. So your feedback, our conversations together are really important. So I would just encourage you to reach out and call us or email us. Um, and and uh, you know, we look forward to that opportunity. We definitely will be in contact with you after this call. We wanna get everyone into their Axos Invest account. We wanna get you your $200. Um, so that you can really look at great ideas like the Tactical Credit Income Fund or other opportunities uh, with Shelton or with any of our other professional asset managers in our self-directed 
trading platform. So with that, Jeff, I'm going to bring you back and um, let's um, let's chat a bit um, about um, some of these other questions we have. So Jeff, can you talk a little bit about Shelton's um, track record in the um, in the tactical credit income fund, and you know what you've seen in terms of of the of the performance? Sure. Uh, the fund began in 2013, and over the life of the fund. We've outperformed the AG, uh, which is what a lot of people consider the benchmark fixed income index uh, by a significant amount. Uh, the slide that I put up earlier uh, with a bunch of historical examples of periods of rising rates where the fund has proven to be resilient and outperform fixed income indices in those periods of rising rates is something we're proud of. And so, like any fund, we have periods where we may underperform or outperform, but over the longer period of time, our track record is pretty good and we're proud of it. That's great. Thanks. So, share a little bit about uh, the timeline that you use, or really maybe to be more specific, the process that you use to reassess the short-term versus the long-term situation with the interest rates? Great question. Um, I'm proud to be part of a great team at Shelton uh, in the fixed income group. And so we have a tremendous amount of collective experience in the markets uh, with differing experience that we all bring to the table. And so we have uh, experts in municipal bonds, corporate bonds, uh, interest rate derivatives, um, and people that have been uh, uh, bond investment bankers, traders, salespeople, and so really a great complement uh, of experience on the team. And we're talking constantly throughout the day, uh, assessing all of the incoming economic data corporate earnings data, uh, news, uh, not just domestically, but internationally. You know, we saw this week where the Bank of England uh, or the UK, the new UK government uh, fiscal policies that sort of came out of left field and were highly questionable to the market uh, through global interest rates on a, you know, upward spike. And then the Bank of England jumped in uh, to provide emergency assistance at the long end of the uh, uh, bond market. And so that kind of whipsawed the market. So, you know, we're assessing all of these things uh, constantly and make, you know, using our experience and judgment to make changes where appropriate um, to, you know, again, play defense where appropriate uh, or play offense to take advantage of opportunities that are constantly being created. That's great. Well, we definitely you know, have some interest um, amongst the, the viewership here to, today to, to potentially you know, um, take a look at this opportunity and uh, have their account here at Axos Invest. So I just you know, wanna let everybody know that you know, this, this fund, and it's DEIBX is, is available through Axos Invest account here at Axos. So you can access that through our website, axos.com, and go to the invest page and uh, click on self-directed trading, get started, and, uh, and you can open your account from there. We don't really have any minimums per se. Um, Jeff, I don't know if you know offhand, you know, but the minimum for the fund, uh, the access point is probably $100 minimum. 
Well, we, we do have two share classes. So there is a retail share class that's uh, very accessible to individual investors. Mm -hmm. So very, very low, low entry point uh, to get in. That's one of the great benefits of, of mutual fund investments is being able to get in at a low minimum and get access to this caliber of institutional portfolio management. So we would encourage you to go there or contact our relationship managers at this 888 number that, that is on the screen right here. And we can walk you, definitely walk you uh, through, through the process of it. So Jeff, in closing, is there, what, what sort of final tips would you uh, give to our uh, viewers here um, as they walk away tonight? What are your last kind of final tips on the markets, inflation, interest rates? Uh, yeah, it's so, so very much appreciate the opportunity to be here with you and everyone. Uh, in closing, I would just say, we're in a bit of unprecedented territory here with coming out of a pandemic into supply chain challenges, uh, spiking inflation. So the Federal Reserve is doing their best to conquer inflation. Be patient. It's going to take time. Uh, it's, it's likely going to take into next year. But the current volatility and level of interest rates that are offered in the market we think is a pretty compelling opportunity. Uh, and so if you can take advantage of that uh, with a sound investment manager, we'd be delighted if it were with us. But if if not, um, you know, there these are pretty uh, interesting opportunities for high quality fixed income. Again, it hasn't been much of an alternative for the last few years things have changed and now uh, it is a pretty interesting entry point for investors into fixed income. Absolutely. I think terrific, terrific ideas shared here today. Thank you so much for your insights, Jeff, for Shelton Capital Management. And, you know, we look forward to talking uh, with each and every one of you about these strategies and more. So with AXO self-directed trading platform, again, you have access to all the mutual funds, all the exchange traded funds, all the stocks. We have margin capabilities, option capabilities, near free uh, in all of those categories. So we just invite you to come in, take a look, get started, take advantage of this investment that we want to make in you and, and your account. and um, Let's together discuss how we can help you accomplish all your financial goals. So thank you everyone for being here. Thank you for your participation and questions. And uh, we will look forward to seeing you again uh, in our next uh, client education series. And uh, everyone have a wonderful evening. Thank you, Jeff. Good night. My pleasure. Thanks so much. Thank you.